Hello friends and welcome back for episode 5 of our Long Live the Queen Let's Play. We are here at week 32 and we are about to get into possibly some pretty serious situations. As you might remember last episode, we had a little incident come up where we are to be betrothed to a young man who is maybe a little bit of a wild card and not necessarily uh, the type of caliber of a person that I would like to induct into my royal family, so uh, we're not exactly sure how that's all going to end up. We've also got some sort of a possible like civil war mounting, there's some tensions, things are, are going badly in the political front, and I'm not sure if I'm necessarily equipped as the uh, soon-to-be queen to necessarily quell this uprising, but we're gonna see how things go. I mean, as we are at week 32, I think we're probably more than halfway through the game at this point, so we're gonna see uh, where things end up, if uh, we're gonna end up dead, or maybe we'll be really lucky and make it through to coronation, I'm not sure. One thing I do know, though, is right before we get started, I just wanted to hit a real quick point, and that's that uh, I did want to keep this primarily a spoiler-free uh, zone, at least as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you guys discuss amongst yourselves all you want, uh, but, like, hopefully not in the comments as much. And I have seen a few things, and, uh, you know, it's not a big deal, and I'm not upset about it or anything, but I did actually get a couple of messages and an email or two uh, telling me specifically what to do to avoid, uh, you know, an instance of imminent death. And honestly, now that I've seen it, I'm not, it's not a big deal, and I'm glad that I've seen it in a way, because I don't want the Let's Play to end prematurely, or at least this round to end prematurely. But uh, not necessarily a thing that you guys need to do in the future. Uh, if I'm going to end up to going to my death, then that is just the way it'll be. Uh, I've wanted to just sort of do this off the cuff, to just have my own experiences. I've been trying to make my own judgment calls, uh, progress the game as I would, you know, uninfluenced, so to speak. So... Now that I've seen the information, I'm not just going to, like, purposely ignore it and then get killed, right? Because that doesn't really make any sense. Uh, but in the future, no need to tell me if I'm about to do something stupid. I'll, I'll figure it out on my own, and if things are still going well, we'll start over and we'll, uh, you know, dust ourselves off and hopefully make a better choice in the future. By the way, I have been keeping all of my uh, other saves. Each time I finish an episode, I've made a new slot for it, so at uh, the end of each one's progress, I could actually just transport back in time if we wanted to do such a thing, but I don't necessarily want to do that. So anyway... We are here, we are going to get started. Now that we're two and a half minutes into the episode, we're actually going to make some moves here. So I need to do a little bit of an improvement to court manners. And uh, what else is on big bonus right now? Military strategy, probably want to up some of that as well. And of course weapons, we continue to grow in that respect. You know, I've completely neglected the mystical element of the game, and that's been primarily just because I'm sort of playing a role in this case. And yes, I've been sort of a jack-of-all-trades, master of none, as I've said a few times in the past. Uh, but I thought this was sort of an effort to mitigate some of that by taking less in the mystical traits, and maybe a bit less also in the animal handling, handling and athletics traits as well. Not sure if this is going to end up being a good or a bad thing. Uh, also neglected a lot of agility stuff, maybe reflexes, I might, might want to pump that up a little bit more. Flexibility and dance, I'm not sure how exactly that relates to, uh, you know, aiding our people. I understand dance is sort of a necessary component of being, you know, royal and such. I'm not sure flexibility necessarily is quite as important, but maybe it ties in with reflexes and maybe there's a specific trait for that that matters. Uh, at a certain moment in the game, and I've been told even that there were a few traits that just don't matter at all, like apparently poison, but there may have been some disagreement and dissent amongst that opinion. So let's uh, actually make a move here. So let's go, our mood is angry, almost flatlined other than that, so good to know. I think we should probably keep things about where they are for now. Uh, classes, uh, we're going to do court manners, like I said, and I'll go ahead and do a little bit of naval strategy since it's zeroed out. And, uh, you know, since this is uh, getting early or further into the game, I think this is probably an instance where that sort of a thing is going to come up, especially if we're ramping up for battle here. I want to try and make sure that I've got as much as possible. So we're at week 32 morning at level 80 and 90. You study the forms of written address, how to issue and decline invitations, how to announce an impending visit, and how to correspond with rulers of foreign domains. At level 90, you study the language of flowers. Uh, that's not what I expected that to say. And the secret meanings that can be communicated through the gift of a bouquet. Ooh, that's mysterious. Alright, week 32, afternoon, at thresholds of 10 and 20, you learn that the sea is not something you hold, it is something you travel across. Not sure that's the way I would have put that, but that's fine. Naval strategy ensures your free travel while denying it to your enemies. At level 20, you study different kinds of ships, their names, designs, and number of crew needed for each. So that leaves us at 20.67 and we get our bonus from Angry. 
Alright, so we've got a little bit of exposition here. Things have been so unsettled lately, everyone's on edge, we need something cheerful. You could hold the tournament. What a good idea. Uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> Knights, jousting, musicians, all sorts of competitions, everyone loves a contest. What will you offer as prizes to the winners? Alright, what can we do? Status and praise, employment, or gold? Well, the one thing that I think being a queen-to-be sort of imparts that person with is the ability to send and lend out status and praise at basically no cost. Uh, employment imparts a necessary, uh, you know, fee, and obviously gold is a fee. So uh, I'm gonna go with status and praise and see how this goes. Being declared to be the best in front of the entire domain should be prize enough for anyone. You know, honestly, it's a pretty compelling argument. I like the look of determination on her face as she says that too. Very well, I will draft the announcements. You leave him to his work. As you move through the hall, your eye falls upon a vase of flowers, pretty but apparently not getting enough water. The leaves of one blossom have shriveled. Divination failed, decoration failed. Someone on hall duty is being lazy. These flowers should be replaced. You continue up the stairs to your room where a maid is waiting for you. My lady, a gift has arrived from Kiggle. From the Duke? No, my lady, a merchant house, I believe. It was sent with a shipment down the Cavella River. Cavella's big deer hunter. You tear open the brightly colored paper to find chocolates. All right, let's slow down here. I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> that a very common way to send people poison is in packages uh, disguised as things that look delicious to eat. Now, I'm not sure, being a naive 14-year-old queen-to-be, that she necessarily has the cognitive faculties to be able to differentiate a friendly package of chocolates from a dangerous package of chocolates, and I would hope that the royal guard and those advisors around her might advise her that maybe that would be a bit of a danger to just go nomming into a box of chocolates that you don't necessarily know where they're from, especially if there's a maid that might not be a regular around that just decides to say they're from a certain place. Hopefully you get what I'm kind of getting at here. Uh, I really hope this doesn't go badly. Here we go. Production plus trade failed. Uh, there is a little card with the box. With our compliments, the house of Carolette. Alright, I don't know them, and I'm not really familiar with that name. Court manor success. That's oddly high-handed for some tiny trader I've never heard of. That's right. That is exact. No, save it for- Dogs failed? Why on earth would dogs be failed right there? Am I supposed to feed the chocolates to the dogs? Save it for later. I don't feel like candy right now. Maybe later. You were so excited for it like five seconds ago. Evidently, that's not the case anymore. Okay. Well, because I kind of decided for you. So let's keep you angry, because I think you do well when you're angry. So we're going to do some anger training. Uh, I take the court for a few games, a few games of tennis, feel the thrills, competition. Okay, we're as determined as ever going to week 33 here. Uh, we are going to go to our skill tree, and we are going to look again at what we might need to boost up here. So our military has gotten another bonus, and uh, what else is there? Well, it's, it's a little higher, I believe. It was like one point something before. Uh, we could just spend the day doing all military training, or maybe... Since we've got, you know, a huge bonus, 2.95, we could hit a little bit more of the archery and pole arms. Why don't we do, like, uh, archery on one hand, and uh, more naval strategy again on the other hand. Uh, and then we'll, we'll try and even these out, because I really do want to be a good leader, uh, especially if there's an impending conflict. And I think intrigue also would go well, as well as history, uh, but I haven't really focused in those departments quite yet. Alright, so we're going to go to classes... And we are going to set up the things that I just said three seconds ago. There we go. Military and do, do, do weapons. So there. I swear, every single time I come to this menu, it looks like I've never been here before, and I have no concept of where the things are anymore. It's really weird. Okay, so week 33 morning, uh, we've reached tiers 30 and 40. You study different kinds of ships, their speed, maneuverability, and standard complement of weapons. At 40, you learn about the requirement of all, uh, for all civilized sailors to rescue the crew of a sinking ship, even an enemy. Well, that's good. You've unlocked a new outfit. That's probably going to be a really helpful outfit, actually. I might want to end up wearing that right away. Uh, week 33 afternoon, so we're in our archery training now. At level 60, you practice shooting at clearly marked targets across that uh, flat field. Uh, at 70, you practice shooting at targets of different shapes and sizes and mixed terrain. At 80, you practice long-distance shooting, setting arrows into the ground at different ranges. 
right, seems like all very good training for you to have. All right, so this is the week of the general tournament. Nobles and commoners alike have turned out to compete against each other. So the people will be pleased if you participate in their games. However, it would expose you to danger. What event do you wish to take a part in or take part in? Uh, well, you kind of know how this goes, right? Like, I've kind of made the same decision every single time. I feel like, honestly, I would be pretty well off if I was to do jousting or fencing. Probably uh, fencing, rather, because I don't have any, like, horse skill. Uh, mounted parade? What would that even be a test of? But I'm gonna not really necessarily get involved with fighting people with swords right now if I can avoid it, because we may have to do that mandatorily. Even if this is a bit of a disappointment to my people, my apologies, guys. I gotta watch out for uh, number one here and make sure we get to the end of the game if possible. I guess I'll just watch from my tower, plus one to depressed. It's so sad every time I make that decision. I feel like I'm dramatically hurting her life and making her sad. You know, as somebody who suffered from depression before, I know what it feels like to be cast as an outsider, and it's like, I feel like I'm doing that to someone against their will, which is a really strange emotional attachment to have to a primarily text-driven game like this with, you know, very little actual input aside from just reasonably decent writing. Um, actually, I don't, I'm not sure if I can necessarily give an attribute in terms of my, uh, you know, summation of the writing quality of this game, because there's so little of it in a way. It's not like we're reading a little, like, a novella, or even, I wouldn't even say this is, like, necessarily a visual novel, although I guess probably a lot of people would classify it as that, uh, because the writing is really kind of very succinct and to the point, and it just gives you enough little nuggets that you can just get the feeling of a situation without necessarily having to read, you know, pounds and pounds of text. Uh, and honestly, the character that we're playing as, or assuming the role of Elodie, she doesn't really seem to be all that characterized, and that's probably just intentional to let you fill that role in with whatever's going on in your head, and that's usually a good call, I would say. Uh, but maybe, you know, a few little more tidbits of information about her wouldn't be too bad. Anyway, the tournament goes on without you. Uh, after the tournament, a minor tragedy is revealed. All right, one of the stewards apparently had an incredible sweet tooth and dared to steal a piece of your recently received chocolates. He had a sweet tooth. The chocolates were poison. That was so obvious. I called that. When you ask questions, it turns out that the merchant house, which supposedly sent you this present, never existed. I called that too. I swear, I didn't look this up. I just figured this out by intuition. Plus one to afraid. Someone has tried to kill you, but you don't know who. This is getting intense. It's, it's a little bit of like a murder mystery here. And this is what I mean by the, the writing is good, it's just not lengthy, which I don't know why I'm necessarily putting those two things at odds, because you can have excellent writing that's short too, but I don't know. Anyway, without getting any more involved in this topic, let's, uh, let's keep her anger one last time. Is there another anger thing that I can use? I don't know, not like that really matters, right? Let's just do the same thing again. Alright, so I've gotten a new outfit as well. This is my military training uh, uniform. Oh, look at that. How proper. It's a, a lovely uniform for us. So let's do our list here is our skills. And our military bonus is now 2.29, which is outstanding. Uh, I think we can get quite a bit done here if we really wanted to. Um, do I really want to mess with weapons? Man, 3.21. That's probably the largest bonus I think I've ever seen, actually. Why don't we do uh, one more to pole arms so we get them all pretty high up, and we'll do one more for uh, naval strategy. Just push that, you know, even further up. Um, do I have to get, what was it, everything to 50, right? And then I can go higher. So actually, I should do logistics then, if that's really the case. So we'll go, uh, what was it again? Pole arms and logistics classes. So weapons, well, I'll just change that to there, and that to there, and done. Alright, week 34 morning at rank 40. Uh, this is again logistics and military training. You learn about the support costs created by support. Uh, the more equipment you have, the more people and animals are needed to move them. And then those people and animals also need to be fed and equipped. At rank 50, you learn about the difficulty of obtaining new supplies from the field. Enemy civilians may hide or destroy supplies rather than let them fall into your hands. And, if, uh, and friendly civilians may not stay friendly if robbed. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. <laughs> kind of wouldn't hold that too against them, right? Uh, if the other opposing force doesn't rob them. Although, you know, they might sack and pillage them as well, so who knows. 
Uh, so week 34 afternoon, uh, rank of 50 for pole arms. Uh, you practice sparring with a partner using a staff, rank 60. You practice special techniques with a staff, such as twirling it or using it to vault. That is a special technique. I don't think I've ever really pole vaulted before. Anyway, actually, I think I had to do that one time in high school and it didn't go very well. Um, kind of a dangerous thing to make kids do, right? I mean, you're like flying way up in the air. Uh, pole arms are now 68.58. Ah, oh, so close. Increased by 27.49, and bonus from Angry. So here we go again. Alice, also, with the maid that gave me those chocolates, we should, like, question her, right? Because I think that's sort of a thing, right? She tried to, well, I don't know, probably unintentionally tried to kill me. Uh, my lady, your father wishes to speak to you. He says it's urgent. Fine, I'm coming. You find your father standing over a map of the coastline, his face grave. The Duchess of Lilla is present as well. This must be serious. Ships have been sighted on approach from Shangia or Shangia. Uh, not trade ships. This is a war fleet. What? <laughs> Within a week, they'll be in Novan waters. Within two, they could reach the capital. Then we will fight to defend ourselves. You can try to use the treasury funds to hire additional soldiers, but it may be difficult on short notice. Um, why would I not want to do that? Let's think about this for a second. Uh, I'm not really aware of the finances that we're going through at this moment, and I don't think they've ever really made me expressly aware of that information. I mean, yeah, I can take classes in, you know, like economics and uh, various things to do with trade, but they haven't really ever given me a situational briefing on where exactly our economy is and how that might affect the people and places around us. So... I feel like we should use what we can just because, obviously, we're not going to matter a whole lot if we don't exist, right? So let's recruit some soldiers. Fine, we'll do that. Okay. You need to draw up a naval strategy for our ships to carry out. You could choose to act as admiral and lead the fleet in person, but the danger to you would be very great. She must not... Uh, this is Arise, the Duchess of Lilla, by the way. Uh, it would be far too easy for an accident to befall her far from ashore. Uh, don't talk about me like I'm not here. Unless you think your personal skills will make it, uh, make the difference, I strongly advise against it. Uh, I'm gonna go with the same strategy that I've stayed with. I mean, yeah, I've been happily increasing this trait, but I didn't really expect that I was gonna end up actually, like, literally leading a warship. I kind of figured it would just be to, like, help direct the actual admirals or something, but I'm just gonna stay in the capital and uh, turtle some more. <laughs> no, there's too much to do here, I can't go to sea. I mean, there is that as well, right? Like, if your figurehead goes to war and then gets killed, well, that kind of is a major blow to things. Although then, you know, if you do actually end up taking that risk and surviving, the trade-off is that you become sort of more of a hero and people give you more credibility and might listen to you more and give you more deference, which is kind of what you need as a leader. Uh, do your best and Nova will survive. Definitely scary stuff, though. Uh, so now what do we have? Angry, cheerful, willful, pressured. Everything is pretty much right where I keep leaving it. Uh, do I want to just continue upping my same traits? I kind of do, right? This is like the angry weeks. This whole episode is just me being angry. And probably for good right. I mean, somebody tried to kill me. There's war going on. Yeah, I'm pretty angry about all that, actually. I'd prefer that none of that was going on, for real. Uh, so... Where do we want to go next? Uh, my weapon training is, you know, it's pretty good, I would say, at this point. If I did, like, one more shot at pole arms, we would probably be almost all the way up. Uh, I mean, 82 for archery is pretty good. Seems like this bonus for weapons just keeps getting bigger, too. Uh, why don't we just spend the, the whole class training session just doing strategy, uh, various things to do with that. We'll do strategy and logistics for military, because 2.52, not a bad bonus. So, military, logistics already there, military strategy, and it uh, should look again, right? These are all over 50, so we're good to go. And it saved them. Good. So let's go done. And keeping in mind, any one of these days could be the last day or the last week that we get. So, we gotta tread lightly here. Week 35 morning, level 60 for, this is military logistics, you study how to determine when to jettison or destroy excess goods for speed, and how to avoid overreaching. I'm not sure I understand exactly what overreaching is. I guess when you go in too far, uh, and then end up getting cut off from your troops or something like that. I'm not really a military strategist, but anyway. Uh, week, or rather, uh, level 70, you learn 
about how to calculate enemy war preparations based on the movement of goods within their lands, armies do not spring up full-formed overnight. And level 80, you studied the benefits of looting as a troop motivator versus the negative effect on civilian populations. That's some pretty high-level military strategy, I would think. You're getting into, like, the psychology of war, which is, you know, a pretty interesting topic, honestly, especially from, like, a, a leader position. Uh, so now we're on military strategy. Uh, at level 60, you study the power of ranged weapons from arrows to thrown fire and sand, and how the threat of such attacks can shift the enemy response. Level 70, you study the use of cavalry in battle, as well as the costs and benefits of traveling with large animals. Okay, good to know. I believe we have some sort of a exposition moment here. Danger on the high seas, so I guess our uh, naval situation has come to a head here. Ships close in on each other, angling into range. The Shangians have half again as many, or have half again as many troops as you do, it doesn't look promising. Uh, that's not good. So they have like 50% more troops than me. I read that backward at first. Those yeah, are not in my favor. The Novan ships are sunk or scattered, and I'm only laughing here at a sort of a nervous laugh. Uh, as the Shinjian force, or Shinjian force presses uh, towards landfall, Many good soldiers were lost today, and Nova's troubles have not ended. Since you failed to repel the invasion, the Shenjian fleet will soon land, and their troops will begin to progress towards your capital city. Your remaining soldiers will hold them off as long as possible, of course, but the main strength of your military has been exhausted. Nova's future looks bleak. That's a sobering note to uh, continue to go back to classes for, right? Like, is this really necessary at this point, right? Um... How do you move forward from a position like that? I guess you do more weapons training, so let's keep the anger flowing. Right? I'm not really sure what else you can really do at that point. Um, my conversation skills are all very high. Well, honestly, royal demeanor would have been a pretty decent thing to get some more skill in, I guess. Composure is a thing that I think we're going to need something from. Um, I could, I could just try and max out my weapon skill at this point, do pole arms and archery, and hope that I am capable enough of a fighter to repel whatever is about to hit us? I don't know. This is gonna be pretty risky stuff here, especially with so many of these so low. You know, I have like 10 points in battlefield medicine. Yeah, it's, it's, it's looking maybe a little bleak. I don't know if I've chosen all the best choices, but you know, as somebody mentioned in the comments one time, no matter what you pick, You'll regret some decisions, or, or most of your decisions, perhaps, even. So let's finish off our archery and pole arms under weapons class. Done. Week 36 morning, at level 90, you practice shooting at moving targets. At level 100 is archery, by the way. You practice shooting targets while you yourself are moving, pulled along in a chariot. So we are now at level 100, completely finished off archery. You have nothing more to learn about archery, you are a freaking master. Alright, pole arms made it very close to complete, 29 points there, so we've reached level 70, 80, and 90. So 70, you practice basic techniques with a long spear, controlling your thrust and uh, to penetrate specific targets. Level 80, you practice basic swings with a halberd. Uh, building up your arm strength will learn to control the movement. At level 90, you practice sparring with a wooden halberd versus a wooden sword, learning the dangers of overextending or allowing your opponent in too close. Okay, here we go. What's going on today? The invasion of Nova is proceeding. Your coastline is under Shanjian control. Soldiers have marched through villages, trampling fields, and frightening citizens. A diplomatic delegation from Shanjia has requested access to the castle to discuss terms, most likely for your surrender. You lack the strength to hold off their armies, and surrendering now will save many lives. It would seem that you have no choice. You prepare yourself at best, or as best you can, to meet the representatives from Shanjia. Uh, you expected diplomats and a military representative, a general or an admiral. You did not expect the handsome man decked in jewels who now stands before you, a man announced by as uh, by your servants as Togami, king of Shenjia. Foreign intelligence failed. World history failed. Is he really their king? Why would a king come all the way here? Sense magic failed. Okay, so this is Togami. My dear young lady, how difficult this must be for you. So much responsibility at such a tender age. Composure success. You yearn to slap the false sympathy off his oily face. Wow, that's quite a change in uh, behavior from a moment ago. But you force yourself to remain calm. War benefits no one, don't you think? Such a terrible waste. 
Better to settle things in a civilized manner. That's an awfully condescending way of approaching someone you've just sort of taken down. Uh, you know, have a little humility, right? You just killed a bunch of our men. Uh, contest, a game, so to speak, with Nova as the stakes. Wow. What a jerk. Who proposes a contest? Couldn't we have had the contest before? Uh, whatever, that's not how things work, is it? Should I win, then your domain will submit and accept me as overlord with no future resistance. Should I lose, then my army will leave your domain in peace and shed no more blood. So this is going to culminate in basically a test of some one skill, I assume. What sort of a game? Uh, it is well known that Nova is ruled by Lumens. As it happens, I possess... Oh no, here we go. As it happens, I possess the powers of a Lumen. I propose a formal duel my powers against yours. The winner takes control of Nova. The loser dies. I am not a Lumen. Saving it for the coronation. Were you such a pity that you'll be unprepared? Well then, go and find your crystal. Becoming a Lumen is a very simple matter. Then we can have our duel. What's the point? You know I can't win. Why don't you just kill me now? Because that's not the game. You want to save your people, don't you? I want to fight a Lumen. Wow, this guy is a huge jerk. If you refuse, then the war will continue. I mean, that is kind of like how things normally work, right? I'll sweeten the deal. If you meet me in a formal Lumen challenge, I'll call off the invasion even if I win. Really? I swear it by the gods, Nova will be free and safe. Why take that risk? You're winning the war. Alright, so that just cemented his position as the biggest jerk of all time, because that means he's literally fighting this war for no reason, and is simply posturing and trying to show off how strong he is. It's not your land that I want, it's your crystal. Oh, okay. To gain your power, I'm willing to wager my own. Shall we begin? Since magic failed. I don't like this, but what choice do I have? So I have to do this right now? Offer marriage, alliance, refuse outright, accept his terms. I don't know, if I re if I accept his terms, he said he'll leave us alone regardless. I feel like I'm in one of those positions where it's like he's just gonna probably kill me, take my crystal, and then continue to kill all our people anyway, because it's just how these sort of situations seem to work out. Offering a marriage alliance is not even a thing he really asked for or mentioned. Uh, plus, I'm already, like, kind of allied with that other dude who, I don't know, sort of just went away now. I'm not sure what's going on with him. If I refuse outright, that seems like a really bad idea. I don't think we necessarily have the military forces to be able to take him. I don't know. This is one of those really tough, like, rock in a hard place situations where I don't feel like there is any right answer. It's just about uh, the, the situation as it pertains to the other party and what they're willing to actually give. Because there's nothing stopping him from just lying to me, right? Like, what's going to happen? He's already got us under his control. If he lies to me, he's still going to be in control either way. Even if I follow his rules and he kills me, I don't know. This is a tough one. Definitely the hardest decision I've had to make so far. <sighs> I have literally no points in my Lumen Magic skills, and I don't know if I'm going to have any time to actually level them up before this duel, right? So, if I accept this, it's just like, certain death. You know, unless he just takes mercy on me, but he's not gonna do that. He came here just to take my crystal, why would he take mercy on me? Ah, uh, this sucks. Alright, I'm just gonna do it, except... Then, I must. No, not my little girl. You want to fight the Lumen ruler of Nova? Your father reaches into his pocket and pulls out a shimmering blue crystal, which he places over his heart. Illuminate. I didn't even know this was a thing. Your hair stands on end as a veil of blue sparkle settles over your father, crawling into his skin. When it's over, the jewel has been absorbed into his body without a trace. Fight me, leave her alone. Well... This is not what I expected, nor me, actually, uh, but it will serve my purposes just as well. Daddy? Oh my goodness, so we're going to take this in a whole different emotional realm now. Be quiet, Elodie, you are not a queen yet. You're forced to sit and watch as the two men work out the details of the duel and its stakes, then take their places in a carefully worded circle. Your father crosses his arms, summoning up a thick gray fog that swirls around him, hiding him from view. But the Shanjian king conjures a cloud of glowing butterflies which drive into the fog and blow it apart. Then, the invader claps his hands together and chants fiery red lights cluster 
over his fingertips and merge together into a pulsing blob before erupting towards your father. He resists with a beam of blue catching the infernal energy and pushing it back in Togami's direction. This is exciting. This is like a freaking Harry Potter duel or something now. You knew <laughs> what the outcome would be. You knew it all along. Togami is a trained lumen eager to demonstrate his powers. And your father was your father. Plus 10 to depressed. The blue crystal reappears, lying beside your father's body like an innocently discarded bauble. But now, that blue color is colored by a faint wash of red. The smirking king of Shenjia sweeps the crystal off the floor and tucks it away into his robes. How fitting. First I end your mother's life, and then your father's. You what? Well, we never knew how she died in the beginning, right? So I guess that comes full circle. Plus one to angry. Facing facts achievement unlocked. You didn't think her death was an accident, did you? That took careful planning. And now the Novan power is mine, and you even get to live. He holds out a hand in front of him, the elegant robe dangling freely. Now kneel and kiss my hand. Never, not in a thousand years, composure failed. With a scream, you launch yourself at the Shinjian King, prepared to go down fighting. Of course, it only takes a touch of his magic to end your life. And there you have it, folks. I thought we were actually going to get out of this somehow. I thought the father's sacrifice was going to be enough, but... I kind of don't blame her. I mean, she kind of... I can't imagine how you would not be in this position where you would be overcome by emotion, but I guess it all came down to that last composure check. If I might have been able to resist that emotional urge to run at him, maybe I would have gotten out of that situation. Still, not sure exactly where things would have gone after that. It's a bit of a sad end, you know, we made it very far into the game. I actually didn't expect to get this far and live on my first playthrough, having no knowledge of how the game worked at the start. And you saw how rough it was when I was first starting up the game. I didn't even understand necessarily how uh, the game's core concepts really even worked. But each episode that went by, I felt like I got a little bit more facile with them, and now it feels a little bit more like second nature. You know, manipulating your moods through going to classes, and then using those moods to get bonuses. Bonuses unlock outfits, outfits give you more bonuses. Get everything up to level 50, push it up to 100, and then try and pick a character, sort of a trait-based, sort of a class-based character to assume the role of. But this is how things go down. Apparently there are a number of different ways that we could have ended this scenario. There's a number of winning and losing conditions. Uh, I think winning conditions, I'm not sure. I know losing conditions for a fact. Um, there's actually achievements for a whole variety of different things. One of them was actually quite funny. It's something to do with, like, becoming the queen of the cats or something. I kind of wanted to see how that all plays out. But I'm not about to go looking because I still think a lot of the appeal in this is figuring it all out as you go. And I guess that's been sort of today's theme, aside from just making my uh, queen-to-be as angry as possible to try and train up her military training. None of that really worked out, unfortunately. And so it turns out, we found out the fate of our mother, and that one single evil king ended our entire family's lives. So, that is going to be the end of Long Live the Queen's first run. I don't think it's going to be the end of the series, uh, and with your support, provided you guys are still enjoying this concept and continuing on in this fashion, uh, please do let me know that, by the way, in the comments, and uh, leave your likes if you would like to see more. You know, of course, just if you think I deserve those likes, of course, and uh, I will consider uh, going through another run or two based on that response. So hopefully you enjoyed things. It's sad that it came to such a horribly, you know, just depressing ending, but it's a tough life. And that's how things go, I guess. So thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you for your continued support. And I will catch you on the next one. Later.